I don't put any advertising or sponsorship on this show, but if you enjoy the show and you'd like to say thanks by, say, buying me a coffee, why not head over to 5minutebiographies.com forward slash coffee to see how. Welcome to Season 8 of the 5 Minute Biographies podcast. Here is your host, Wayne Armstrong. Hi guys, welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast, Season 8, Episode 7, Davy Crockett. There's probably not a person in America who was a child in the 1950s who can't still sing the theme song to the TV show Davy Crockett. Born on a mountaintop in Tennessee, green estate in the land of the free. Raised in the woods so he knew every tree, killed him a bar when he was only three. Davy, Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. Sales of coonskin caps like the character of Davy Crockett wore were huge, but who was he? Davy Crockett was a real person who led a very interesting life. He was descended from French Huguenots one of whom served in King Louis XIV's household troops. His father, John, fought at the Battle of King's Mountain during the American Revolutionary War. Davy Crockett himself served in the military as well and was also elected to Congress before famously dying at the Battle of the Alamo. He was born on the 17th of August 1786 in Greene County, Tennessee, the middle child of nine. It's easy to say he was meant to be a frontiersman, having been taught by his father to shoot his rifle at the tender age of eight. He loved to go hunting, but his father insisted he go to school when he became a teenager, although school lasted less than a month as he ran away following an altercation with the school bully. He did return a few years later at age 15 to help pay off debts his father owed, first to Abraham Wilson and then John Kennedy. His father had told him he was free to leave, but he decided to stay in John Kennedy's employ for a further four years, during which time he fell in love with John Kennedy's niece, Amy Summer, who unfortunately for Davy was engaged to be married to Kennedy's son, John. Just before he turned 20, Davy married his first wife, Mary Finley, known as Polly, and they moved to a small farm. They had three children, but sadly Mary died in 1815. Crockett then married a widow called Elizabeth Patton, who already had two children, with the couple going on to have two more children of their own. Davy's military career began during the War of 1812, when he enlisted as a scout with a company of mounted riflemen. Serving under Colonel John Coffey, he preferred to hunt wild game rather than kill Creek warriors, staying with the company until December 1813. Crockett re-enlisted and was given the rank of 3rd Sergeant in the Tennessee Mounted Gunmen, with the aim of helping Andrew Jackson drive the British out of Spanish Florida, although he saw little action. He served out his term, returning home in December 1814. During 1817, Davy Crockett entered public office for the first time when he became a Commissioner of Lawrence County, following which he became a Justice of the Peace. As he was also now running several businesses, he found that he no longer had the time required to dedicate to public office and so resigned as Justice of the Peace in 1819. In 1821, he stepped down as Commissioner and successfully ran for a seat in the Tennessee House of Representatives. Only a few weeks later, the Tennessee River flooded and destroyed his business. Davy first ran for the US Congress in 1825, a bid that was unsuccessful, but in 1827 he did win and was also re-elected for the 1829-31 session. During this session, Crockett introduced a resolution to abolish the United States Military Academy at West Point and also opposed President Jackson's 1830 Indian Removal Act. However, his opposition was not popular with his own district and so he lost the election of 1831. Crockett returned to Congress when he was elected in 1833, serving a further two years. During his final year in Congress, Davy Crockett published his autobiography entitled A Narrative of the Life of Davy Crockett. In 1836, various newspapers published a now famous quote from the book. I told the people of my district 
that if they saw fit to re-elect me, I would serve them as faithfully as I had done. But if not, they might go to hell, and I would go to Texas. Davy Crockett's desire to help the underdog led him to leave politics behind and head to Texas in a bid to help the territory gain its independence from Mexico. He left West Tennessee on the 1st of November 1835, arriving in Texas in January 1836. Having signed an oath to the Provisional Government of Texas for a period of six months in return for a promise of 4,600 acres of land as payment, he and five other men headed for San Antonio, arriving at the Alamo Mission on the 8th of February. Two weeks later, a Mexican army arrived at the Alamo, surprising the men garrisoned there. The Mexicans immediately began the incessant bombardment of the garrison, with the guns gradually being moved closer and closer in an effort to increase their effectiveness. Several messages were sent from the garrison requesting reinforcements and some men did make their way to the Alamo getting to within 20 miles by the 3rd of March. Davy Crockett and two other men had been sent out to try and make contact with the local Texan soldiers and the group managed to fight their way through the Mexican lines and back into the Alamo on the 4th of March. On the 6th of March the Mexicans attacked whilst the defenders were still asleep and the final battle began. The Mexican soldiers managed to breach the walls and so the defenders fell back to the barracks and the chapel. However, Davy Crockett and his men were too far away to make it back safely, becoming the last of the defending soldiers to be left out in the open, resorting to -to hand-to-hand combat with the oncoming Mexicans. The Battle of the Alamo lasted 90 minutes and all of the defenders were killed. Their bodies were taken by Santa Ana's troops to some nearby trees and burned to ash. It would be almost a year before the ashes would be put into a simple coffin by a local carpenter, upon which was carved the names Travis, Crockett and Bowie. There has been some controversy over the death of Davy Crockett. Whilst it's not disputed that he died at the Alamo on the 6th of March 1836 at the age of 49, the nature of his death has been called into question. Crockett loyalists claim that he died in battle fighting off Mexicans hand-to-hand with only his knife, whereas it has also been claimed that he surrendered and was then executed by Santa Ana's men. Whatever the truth about Davy Crockett's death, he has become part of American folklore, with streets, schools and state parks named after him, and he'll always be remembered as the King of the Wild Frontier. I hope you enjoyed that episode of 5 Minute Biographies. If you did, why not say thanks by buying me a coffee? Head on over to 5minutebiographies.com forward slash coffee to see how. Thanks for listening to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast at www.5minutebiographies.com.